Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our prayer time here together. Welcome into Fellowship Bible Church. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to gather together here to pray. I really think it's important that every time we have the opportunity to do this, that we do. Um, boy, more than ever, we need to be united in our hearts together, going before the Lord, even if the circumstances continue to kind of prevent actually gathering together. It's good that we have this opportunity to do this, and I'm so just grateful to God that we have the same faith and the same spirit, and we believe the same gospel, and and now we can have the same prayer from our heart going up to the Lord together. I want to start tonight by reading to you uh, from Psalm 53, and uh, Psalm 53 is a psalm that starts with a familiar saying, but I think the context of it is probably some sort of battle or, or military campaign that Israel found themselves in when they were under David. David's identified as the uh, the author of the psalm. And um, it's kind of one of these things where some nation that uh, didn't really acknowledge God or believe in any God and there was no fear of God came up against Israel and then God fought on behalf of Israel and saved Israel and uh, boy, that kind of just changed everything. And, and uh, well, let me just read it for you and then maybe give it a thought and then we'll, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. To the chief musician set to Mahaloth, a contemplation of David. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Every one of them is turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? There they are in great fear, where no fear was, for God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. You have put them to shame, because God has despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion, when God brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice, and Israel be glad. And you know that the saying in the beginning of that psalm, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. We sometimes just sort of generally associate that with maybe atheists or something like that. And there's, there's obviously application to that. But really you can see as you read the words of the psalm, what he has more in mind is not the person who just in their mind or in their spirit doesn't believe that there's a God, but it's the person who in a practical way, lives as if there's no God. The way it reads, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. In the New King James Version, you can see that the words there is are in italics because the translators put them in there because it carries the thought and the intent of the Hebrew, but literally it's not there. Really, literally how it reads is, the fool has said in his heart, no God. And therefore, they were not afraid to go up against the children of Israel and fight against them. And they weren't afraid until God fought on behalf of Israel. Then they were afraid, right? And then at the end of the psalm, David rejoices over the salvation of Israel. And there's, a, there's kind of a paradigm there that I think translates over even to where we live now. We live in a day and age that it seems like it's just every day something new. It seems to be becoming unhinged. You think of the words of Jesus who said that the love of many would grow cold and lawlessness would abound. Well, you know, it's, uh, you have a society that's living like there's no God, exactly as this psalm describes. But this is the key as we go to prayer. It's very important that those who believe the gospel and are reconciled to God through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, that we stand strong and we endure and we remain faithful and we continue to pray because just as David rejoiced about the salvation of of Israel coming out of Zion, our salvation is going to come when our Lord Jesus returns. And that's what we've got our eyes on. 
And so even if the whole world around just lives like no God, no God, no God, we remain humble before the Lord, faithful, trusting in Him with all of our hearts. As we're doing it, trying to be a faithful and gracious, humble witness to those around us that God might bring others to Himself. So be encouraged. Stay faithful to the Lord. Let us pray, everybody. Our Father in heaven, dear Lord God, we thank you so much that we can gather together here right now. Together, maybe not in location, but together in spirit, together in purpose, together in our heart's desire to see you glorified, together in our heart's desire, Lord, to be close to you. As your word says, we draw near to you, you draw near to us. We exalt and bless and praise your holy name, the name of Yahweh, of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the one true God, the only God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who ought to be feared, the one who ought to be believed, the one who ought to be worshipped and adored and obeyed, the one who ought to be believed. Because like this psalm says, there's none who does good. Yeah, that includes us too, Lord God. We in and of ourselves can hold up no goodness of our own before you. You ought to be believed because this gospel message, Lord, of what you did in sending the Lord Jesus, your only begotten Son, our precious and beautiful Lord Jesus, you gave your life for our sins. You gave your life for us who have done no good. You became sin for us when you died on the cross, that we, through faith in you, Lord Jesus, might become the righteousness of God. We're not righteous in and of ourselves. We are justified. We're declared righteous by the Father when we put our faith in the Son. Lord Jesus, you died for us. You were buried and you rose from the dead, triumphant, and you have smashed all power of death over anyone who has faith in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that our hope now is securely all in you. Praise your holy name. Thank you for all of your goodness to us, even as we continue to go through a difficult season of our lives. Perhaps we even sense some of the early rumblings that would show us to keep our eyes fixed on heaven, Lord God, looking for your return. We are thankful that you are God and you do not change and you do not move. You are our God and you are a rock. Praise your holy name. Please forgive us, Lord, where we fall short. Help us to be gracious and patient with one another. Please forgive this world, Lord God, for having forgotten you. And please permit, Lord God, that many more would humble themselves, realize that you're there and you're real and you ought to be feared and realize their own sin before you and realize the love and grace of the gospel of Christ. Use us as your witnesses, your mouthpieces, your servants to bring the good news of Christ to the world around us, Lord God. Help our lives in the midst of whatever is going on. Help our lives to stand for and represent you, our Lord Jesus. Christ and him crucified. We pray for our church, Lord God, and I pray that you would strengthen the people of our church, that our faith would remain strong, that our love towards one another would be strong, that we would desire, Lord God, to gather, whether it's here in person or online, that there would be a great desire to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some but encouraging each other, Lord God, encouraging each other by gathering, and even so much the more as we see what? Your day approaching. Strengthen our church in faithfulness and fruitfulness. Strengthen our church in the knowledge of your will and growing in grace, Lord God. Please, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray you would do that, Lord God. I pray for anyone in our church, Lord, who is sick or, or hurting or, or struggling financially or with anything, Lord God, that's going on due to the earth circumstances. Help us to help each other, and I pray, Lord God, for your blessing. And I know 
even reminded tonight, Lord God, of how you are able, in spite of the earth circumstances, to bless and care for your own people. You show it again and again and again. And I praise your holy name. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord God, for uh, the leaders in our land. We continue to pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence, who lead the federal government, Lord God. And we pray for Governor Murphy, Lord God, as he leads the state of New Jersey. I pray, Lord God, for Mayor McCormick here in Woodbridge and all the mayors in the towns around here and all the other layers of authority, Lord God, the, you know, the, the, the police and the um, firemen and the, the paramedics, Lord God, and, and the other officials, Lord God, who lead over things. Lord, we know that you instituted human government and they're your ministers and their power is from you. Help us to lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and reverence and call this, these people in these positions, whatever it may be, Lord God, to fear you, to believe the gospel of Christ and to seek their wisdom from you. You're, you're what we need no matter what. We need you. And so we bow before you and we come to you, Lord God. Help us to moment by moment, day by day, walk in deference to you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for hospitals and nursing homes and, and people who are still trying to minister. And I know, Lord God, maybe things have slowed down here in our own state, and we're really, we're really grateful for that, Lord God. Thank you. I don't know what the future holds, but if there may be a little bit of a respite from things here in New Jersey now, Lord God, we're thankful because it was so hard for so long. Other places of the country, Lord God, they continue to see it, I guess. And, and Lord God, we just continue to play, pray for people that are working and trying to help, that you would bless them and encourage them, Lord God. We pray for the civil unrest in our country, Lord God, that you would cause people to be humble. You said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Cause people, Lord God, to be humble before you. Certainly cause Christians to be humble before you. If it's possible, we pray that you would grant that there would be peace and understanding among people. Certainly in your church, that we would humble ourselves before one another and prefer one another to ourselves, as your word says, that we'd be a shining example of love to the world. We pray that your gospel would go forth through us, Lord God, that you would help us to preach your word, that you would grant that when people hear the word from us and from other Christians in the world, that you would grant repentance and faith and new hearts, Lord God, that the name of Jesus would be glorified and magnified, Lord God, in all things, that you would continue to gather together your elect from everywhere in the world, by the calling of the preaching of the gospel of Christ. We thank you, Lord God. Like this psalm teaches us, the world goes on like there's no God, no God, no God. Those of us who know you, Lord God, K-N-O-W, know you, we pray, Lord God, that you would help us to be just lights and salt in the earth, Lord God. And when that day comes, when you return and salvation comes down from heaven as our Lord Jesus in his glorious appearing comes, we pray that we would be found praying and watching and waiting, blown away and amazed and filled with love and joy and excitement, but not overtaken because we know you're going to keep your promise that everyone that is yours, not one, will be missed or lost. Hallelujah. What an awesome God and Savior you are. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord God, for this time of prayer. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for gathering together here tonight. Continue to pray. Pray for our church. Pray for me. I ask you to pray for me and help me to... To help pray that the Lord would help me to just remain strong and focused and, and faithful. And you might not realize it, but it actually gets pretty hard to kind of 
try to hold things together. And I know it's the Lord that holds things together, but I hope you know what I mean by that. So, so keep me in your prayers if you would too, okay? And uh, um, keep gathering at these things. You know, you can come on Sunday morning. If I just need to know in advance that you're coming, and that's been uh, getting a little nicer every week that's gone by. It's been really great. Um, continue to support and participate and invite people to come to these things we do online. Listen, man, if we see the day of the Lord approaching, we ought to be taking advantage of every opportunity. And here's a chance right here in our own church with our own use of these things to kind of spread the word of what's going on, to spread the, the knowledge of the gospel and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. So, so I encourage you to participate in that. Our next gathering online here will be Thursday night. That'll be at 7 o'clock for our Bible study right here on Facebook Live. Love you all so much. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Good night, everybody.